All right, the autonomous agents seem to be here, and we want to explore this technology a little bit further and see what are the capabilities and the downsides of this technology. In this case, we will explore two of them. One that is claiming, claiming to be the first general agent, um, which is Manus AI. It's a tool that was released one and a week and a half and is getting a lot of traction nowadays and is capable of performing tasks like the one you see here, which is data analytics. And then we also explore um, Replit, which is a software development agent that is connected to their own system, uh, a development environment um, that is integrated to the agent and is capable of performing digital prototypes quite fast and just with plain English. Um, we will explore the technology, how they work and check some of the downsides of this technology to be integrated in larger systems. Let's jump into it. All right, this is the new kid in town. It's Manus AI. It's getting a lot of popularity nowadays. You need to get access via the beta list and they're doing quite good marketing in that aspect. And they have multiple use cases. We will explore some of them later on. Uh, but the first thing that I want to check is the benchmarks. This is Gaia, uh, which is a benchmark that was developed by OpenAI, Meta, and Hugging Face. Uh, those are like big institutions when it comes to benchmarking um, LLMs and agents, etc. They follow this, um, like these four pillars, which is reason logically, process multimodal inputs, use external tools effectively. That's super relevant and automate real world task. That's basically what we want with general agents. And you see that Manus AI is surpassing the capabilities of OpenAI Deep Research that when it was what OpenAI Deep Research was released was really, really impressive. But Manus is uh, doing really, really good in terms of the performance. Actually, it's now at the moment the state of the art. Uh, best performance. Let's check the, how the technology works and see, see actually Manus in action. We see here some of the best uh, use cases that they have available in their landing page. I think we want to go for this one uh, because it's a data analytics challenge and it requires to use external tools to perform the analysis and you need to have like logical thinking is like it's a good good case to, to explore this technology. But you see that the diversity of the use cases is quite broad, which is the, the relevant thing about the general agent. So let's explore this one and check the performance of data analytics challenge. So initially it's just starting with a simple plain English prompt. It's quite easy actually. And then it's opening a terminal in where it's performing everything in the backend and it's working actually quite fast. You see that it's not taking long to do all the, the dependencies. We will probably pause it and check it further how it's working, but you see that it's plain English and it's actually giving just a data set, which is an Excel and is asking to perform an analysis with visualizations that will require probably to install a uh, Matplotlib or, um, or Plotly, I don't know, um, to check the visualizations if they are using Python and recommend a specific data driving strategies. It's just three lines of plain English. It's not actually giving a lot of context. So the tool requires to do uh, the composition of the task to follow and then go for it. You see that it's already done. Um, I think we will not enter into the details of the report in this in this moment, but this is what it's interesting is basically doing a decomposition of the two of the tasks is like creating a backlog backlog of different actions. It's probably what you will do if you are performing this by your own and then is following all of them and executing all of them in a terminal. Um, let's check it out. Yeah, actually look at here that is installing in the terminal all the dependencies. In this case, it's installing matplotlib, which is and Seaborn, which are the libraries that the tool is going to use to see the, the visualizations, to plot the visualizations. Then is using pandas, um, which is the normal and usual flow when you are doing exploratory data analysis. Um, and probably this is what it's the most interesting part is that it's creating a list of actions to follow and is performing all of them in this development environment. Um, and it's installing the dependencies and is then performing everything as you see here in the steps. So this is actually what is really impressive because it seems to be a complex, complex task. Normally you will require, I don't know, an SQL expert or uh, someone with the skills in data analytics, uh, like Python and pandas and, or probably R or good skills in, in, in Excel. But at this moment it was done 
absolutely fast and independently without the need of a human just with the context and probably if we give more context about the follow the, the steps what we want to follow and the libraries that we want to use and even if you want to do so much in learning with the data it is also possible to put it in the context of the prompt but you see that everything is just going fast and then the analysis and the report that is creating is solid seems to be solid because we have here like a time series analysis that it was done on by the under, like previously understanding the data it's doing a report of the key insights with the reasoning so it's checking what is the peak of the performance where is the growth declining and checking some of the day patterns it's really really solid in terms of what we will see in a normal report done by humans so this is quite impressive this is how manus ai works i think that we can explore like the report further you can actually do it by your own in the in the landing page because this is a public case but it, what is impressive it's that this technology is decomposing all the steps and doing everything autonomously with without human intervention so we see that in the future these technologies will be embedded in your technology systems and probably you will have your own assistants that are going to perform this with your own data, even in HubSpot, in your CRM, in your sales data, I don't know, in any, in any platform or data source that you use. Yeah, so it's already quite impressive what the technology is capable of, capable of doing, but let's see something that seems to be a little bit tricky because it will require probably to get access to internet and, and performing several actions. I think this case, the B2B supplier sourcing is a good one to explore. The prompt is even simpler. I need to find the best price of rubber mats. And then it's just going all over the internet across multiple sources and it's doing everything quite fast. To be honest, I don't know if this is actually the real speed of the software. Probably it's something that is pre-programmed to be that fast and, and, and like the format is it's quite simple, but I'm absolutely sure that the platform itself works similar. So it's quite impressive because again, it did a backlog of the different actions to complete and then is doing everything um, in the backend in their own development system and is performing the different tasks independently. I'm going to pause it for a while and then wait for the, the output and I'll be back. So we got now the outputs and it seems to be quite solid. This time it's absolutely different. That's why it was taking so long because it's actually a simple task and it just only needed to receive the data and somehow give you a report and the report let's say the simple version of the report could be playing English but in this case it generated a dashboard and that's why it's impressive because it took the decision to create a um, custom dashboard and it generate all the code to perform and, and to deploy the dashboard and we can get access via just this URL and uh, yeah, it's quite impressive because we have different parameters that we can modify and filters that we can apply to the data. And all the data was collected in the internet autonomously by the agent. So that confirmed again that the, these agents are well connected to different tools, including the internet, and then they are capable of performing in their own terminal. The, um, like the dependencies and everything needed to do the uh, multiple analysis. So. We have analysis for the best value options, like the retailer comparison, the math distribution, and then the price comparison. You have a widget here for the price ranges and probably additional filters that you can apply. And everything of this data was collected again via internet in Amazon store, etc. Quite impressive. So that concept of giving instructions via prompt and then observing the agent performing all the tasks out autonomously and creating the backlog and then creating and open a terminal and perform some of the development efforts by its own is what we call byte coding. Because you are just giving instructions in plain English and then you will see a full process that previously required developers, for example, or technical experts to be done. And now you have an assistant that is performing everything for you. Now we're gonna jump to another tool that is called Rep this is an agent that is selectively dedicated to the development or digital products and we will create a digital product for board of innovations to be embedded in our landing page and score your AI matureness. You will see how the agent works um, and you will see um, the different downsides and challenges that the bot will face during the process of creating this digital product. All right, we are in this moment in Reblit. The yeah, the interface is quite easy to use. We have developed some of the products. So in this case, we will give an, again, an instruction is simple. We want to create a visual appealing and user friendly landing page. Uh, we are giving the instruction that we want to use Streamlit, which is a library in Python for creating 
uh, the digital prototypes is quite popular and we are giving some instructions in this case are general instructions nothing heavy and we just click in creating the app so in this moment the agent is calculating like the different actions and steps that requires to follow is creating a plan and this tool works that after creating the plan of the different steps that the tool will follow you will just simply approve it so let's give it a couple of seconds uh, while that happened and we will get back once the plan is ready no sorry actually the plan is ready now so we just need to say yes we want to complete all of these add more detailed questions across additional material dimensions which is probably things that we lack on the on the context and then get the notification we approve the plan it opens the terminal and in the terminal is performing all the different actions so in this case it's installing the dependencies which is streamlit and it's getting all the process yeah here it's installing everything in, in this terminal let's give it a couple of seconds uh, to complete all the steps and we'll get back and it's done we got the output yeah it's quite impressive again the low context of the prompt is visible and now we see that the output is solid in just a couple of of lines of code and we have here our development environment so if we want to deploy this here we can go to deployments and just make it live following the different steps that's actually what we will do and it's 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 yeah it's quite solid in terms of how it works it's a functional product uh, that is calculating the capabilities based on Ah oh, well, actually we got we had a bug. The, this is probably one of the things that will require. Like if you face a bug in the system, and if you are a scale, a scaling digital prototype using this technology, you will require to take a look and solve the problem. But probably you will have like a, an easy way to solve it just chatting with the agent and say, oh, look at the problem that we have. But if you have something that is serious and uh, a bug in the production and something that will yeah, be probably on yeah something that requires a, an engineer that's probably one of the downsides of this technology but before deploying it and debugging it um, it's quite impressive because everything was happening here in the in the backend so the agent created all the system and it's working quite uh, solid so I'm, I'm gonna try to solve the bug and we'll get back to you once everything is solved okay so in this case actually we didn't do a debugging we just copy and paste the error we say it prints this error when I run the app and then the agent detected when to do the modifications uh so let's see if this time works calculate the maturity and yeah it works it's actually calculating calculating everything as expected and again the low context and the quality of the output is really solid but you saw that in this case it was easy to solve but if you face something that is complex or something that requires like a complex intervention you will be limited when when it comes to in this case it was easy to solve and, and yeah just like a mismatch between the, the the presets of the code but it's quite impressive so what we are gonna do now is to call one of our designers which is yeah, a developer at the same time a designer and we are gonna create this product like a like a real version of this product to see the limits and the possibilities with the software and then we will show you the results all right all right and here we are with the prototype that it's now live it's actually in our website and you see that everything at, at least in terms of design is it's working perfectly we did a modification we didn't work with a streamlit uh, we actually jumped to react native but everything is working quite well we even connected the platform to hubspot and we connected everything we are llm we are keeping the spider shard um, we connected the, this to a database uh, to benchmark based on some data that we have from from our clients and then yeah we simplify all the user experience let me actually fill this out for you quickly um, and of course we want to capture leads so everything is connected to hubspot and yeah it is it it was a um, good experience but it took a while it was not as easy as the first line of codes because we wanted to increase the complexity of the product quite a lot uh, so you see here that we are doing a benchmark comparison we are using an llm a llm to do the 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 recommendations uh, we are even exporting uh, the results to pdf we are storing everything in a database uh, where we can see the results to see the nature of the person that completed everything here and you see that the complexity of this like the the progress and everything we did was 
if definitely much more than just the simple prompt that we gave at the beginning. So if we have multiple soup files that the agent created while we were uh, chatting and of course we needed to do multiple debugs and modifications so it's not a technology that were absolutely independent for complex products maybe if you're doing just like a simple test it, it will work autonomously but if you want to really integrate this into an existing system you will see that you will requir require for sure uh, development force uh, on your site so we have integration to hubspot etc um, it's quite impressive again uh, how everything was done and the agents was storaging and remembering everything and every piece of the conversation so you see that all the development environment all the files are here and it's really quite solid it's connected to JIT to GitHub I definitely see this to become the future for non-technical users and probably for technical users who are better prompters uh, it's going to be a game changer